Uh, there's still a backlog of foreclosures and lots of houses on the market. According to the Case-Shiller Index, prices have double dipped in most major markets. Now, now Susan, we have sub-5% uh, mortgage rates if you've got good credit. Is it, is it the availability of credit? Is it fear? Why is this market not coming back? It's both and others related. It is fear. There are many on the sideline. What happens if prices fall another 5%? You've lost the equity you put in the home. But that is if you can get financing. There are creditworthy borrowers who do want to get into the market but simply cannot because standards have just gone to the other side of the pendulum to such a degree. You now need uh, well over 700, uh, in some cases 750, to qualify for one of those really, really good rates. Mike Aubrey, uh, host of uh, HGTV's Real Estate Intervention, uh, which, by the way, has just caught, kicked off a new season. It's airing Tuesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern and Pacific. Uh, Mike, this issue about waiting for prices to fall more, on average, even if prices went down 5%, maybe even 10%, that's less of a danger than mortgage rates going up by a full percentage point isn't it? I agree completely. I mean, I think the idea of trying to catch the bottom of the real estate market is sort of like trying to catch a falling knife. I mean, you don't have a really good chance that you're going to end up with all your fingers and both your thumbs at the end of that. I think that what you gain by hitting the bottom of the real estate market you're going to lose incredibly more. If you look at an amortization schedule on a 30-year fixed loan, what you're going to pay over the life of that loan is going to be way more than what you get based on trying to catch the exact bottom, which is almost impossible. Lee, you and I have been following uh, everything to do with this housing market uh, from its highs, and really it looked like uh, sometime uh, a year ago things were looking a little bit better. What, what happened? Why have we been set back? Well, a couple things happened. I mean, for one thing, don't forget, a year ago, and actually in 2009, there were um, federal tax credits that were a huge incentive for buyers, and they drew a lot of people into the market, especially first-time home buyers that might not have, that might have sat on the sidelines. So that was a, an enormous push that you could argue artificially propped up the market for for those months and and really for for over a year. We've also seen another trend, and that is uh, a real uptick in rentals, both in the number of people renting and the amount that they're paying for rentals. What does this mean in the in the greater scheme of things? Well, what it does mean is it helps to form that bottom because there are investors in the market who it absolutely makes sense to be purchasing some of these foreclosed homes and renting them out. There are households out there who are becoming renters, and that's a source of affirming of the overall market. Mike, let me ask you this. If you are a potential buyer, you may never see times this good again. I, I think it's not May. I think it, you definitely will not see times this good again. I mean, in terms of what you can get mortgages for right now, I don't know that any of us will ever see in our life what people are selling paper for right now. I mean, it is a great time to go out and buy. And I think that if you sort of lose that idea of, I'm going to purchase a property because I want to flip it, and you realize, I'm going to purchase a property I'm going to live in, I need to pay a fair price for it, and I'll live in it for a protracted period of time, I can assure you, you will outlast the market in any position that it's in. Lee, we had a strange situation with this recession that we went through uh, in 2008 and 2009 in that it was the first recession in our history that was triggered by a mortgage crisis, by a, a housing crisis. Let's do a little chicken and the egg here. What's going to happen first? Should people who are looking to invest in houses uh, or to buy a house do so now and wait for the rest of the economy to recover? Or does the economy have to start recovering on other fronts uh, before houses recover? Well, I mean, I think a housing recovery is going to happen. So I think given the, the metrics out there, you know, there's a good case to be made that it is a good time to buy. But the paralysis factor is just people are not going to do that until certainly not if their job is, is, is at risk or their neighbor's house and it might go into foreclosure, which might further depress their own house price of the, the price that they buy, the house that they buy. So it's, they're, they're really linked. I mean, it's, and, and frankly, it's that's not, not a bad thing that people who are uncertain about their ability to fulfill the obligations of their mortgage mortgage are holding off. That's not a bad thing on a, uh, for the individual involved. No, because you don't want more, um, you don't want, the last thing you want is more defaults and more foreclosures because that sort of triggers an, an, an endless cycle. So it's, it's really tough. I mean, the one thing, you know, Susan mentioned is that with rents rising, these properties are becoming valuable to investors. Right. And so we're seeing investors buy up a lot of, you know, that activity is really, really on the rise because they can make a lot of money.